Amiodarone or Cordarone. Amiodarone is an antiarrhythmic predominantly class 3. It lengthens the action potential, exhibiting some class 1 activity, and it blocks what channels, sodium channels, and some class 2 activity. What is class 2 activity? These are non competitive anti sympathetic activity. So when you say you have an anti-sympathetic activity, you are relaxing, you are relaxing something, like the muscles, okay? Mechanism of action, prolonged conduction, repolarization, refractoriness of AV node with membrane stabilizing action, black sodium, potassium, calcium channels in myocardium. It prolongs intranodal conduction. It also prolongs the action potential. Okay, uh, one of the most uh, interesting part of amiodarone is its half-life. The average half-life of amiodarone is 25 day days, and it ranged 9 to 47 days. The onset of action is immediate with IV infusion. And amiodarone is being distributed widely and rapidly throughout the body like 90% 96% protein bound and it metabol uh, it the um, the the drug amiodarone metabolizes in the liver they call it p453a-cyp3a and it also metabolizes in intestinal mucosa so a uh, major active uh, metabolite is n Decetyl amiodarone, which they call DEA, and this is not significantly affected by renal or hepatic pathology. Uh, so, uh, if it's being metabolized in the liver and uh, intestinal mucosa, how about the elimination of amiodarone in our system? It is also through hepatic metabolism. So, the metabolite excreted via biliary elimination what do you mean by that in feces as unchanged drug and mind you that amiodarone is not dialyzable so uh, why do we give amiodarone in a patient so if you're the patient and we're giving you amiodarone something is really bad okay happen to you and why because amiodarone is being given for ventricular arrhythmias and it is used as a drug and um, a treatment and prophylactic treatment of repeating episodes of ventricular fibrillation or unstable ventricular tachycardia okay refractory to other treatments meaning what do you mean by refractory to other treatments meaning they give you all of this uh, type of uh, medications and uh, it it's not uh, they're, they're not they're not working at all okay and uh, what else is the indication of uh, amiodarone it's also uh, used for ACLS protocol in a cardiac arrest secondary to shock refractory bifib or pulseless VTAC okay so we also give amiodarone and this will be discussed later for ACLS protocol uh, what else is the indication for amiodarone? Atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, conversion to sinus rhythm. Okay, so uh, if you're working in a TCU environment or an ICU environment and you had a patient that suddenly had a rapid AFib or rapid A flutter, which, uh, which runs as high as in the 140s, in the 150s then you have to uh, think about amiodarone you have to think about amiodarone okay um what is the what are the contraindications for amiodarone okay number one is cardiogenic shock so you have to watch for this sinus bradycardia second or third degree av block unless pacemaker is available and of course we don't give amiodarone for patient who are hypersensitivity to this medication or alert uh, who has an allergy 
So what are the rate determination for amiodarone? Amiodarone has three paces, okay, for dosing over first 24 hours, but we don't exceed for about 2.2 grams, okay? So uh, let's make a scenario. Okay, let's say uh, that uh, your patient coded, okay? And uh, one of the ACLS protocol, uh, as all we know, amiodarone is one of the drugs for for BFIV or VTAC, pulseless, okay? So we give 300 milligrams of IB push amiodarone, okay? And uh, after giving that, we also have to consider giving the patient second dose of 150 milligrams IV and the maximum total dose over 24 hours as what I said a while ago is 2.2 grams so you give 300 milligrams you have you gave 150 milligrams so how many milligrams all in all you already have given 450 milligrams okay so uh, for the rapid loading dose okay for patient through IV not IV push now we, all, we have to give 150 milligrams in a 100 ml of D5 water, which is 1.5 milligram per ml. So you have a bag that is 100 cc's bag, and it contains 150 milligrams of amiodarone there. And what would be your dose? What would you expect that the doctor would order? You would expect a 15 milligram per minute of dose of amiodarone. And what is that rate? 600 cc's per hour so if you could if you have uh, already set up your pump you would play 600 cc's per hour or that is over how many minutes over 10 minutes okay over 10 minutes so this is your rapid loading dose and uh, ideally you give the the rapid loading dose for patient who have rapid afib or rapid rapid atrial flutter what's the other one the slow loading phase okay the slow loading phase uh, the concentration for this one is that you have a 500 ml of uh, amiodarone okay 500 ml that contains 900 milligrams of amiodarone and is it being mixed with normal saline no it's not being mixed with normal saline but it is being mixed with d5 water so amiodarone is only compatible for D5 water, okay? So the dose would be one milligram per minute, and you would ex expect giving the patient at the rate of 33.3 cc per hour, which is what? That would be, so you have a 500 ml of uh, 900 milligram of amiodarone, so you'll be giving the patient 360 milligrams over six hours so that 500 cc's needs to be uh, is good for six hours so if you've noticed that oh this uh, this uh, bag is only good for three hours oops you are overdosing the patient that's not the right rate okay the right rate is 33.3 for amiodarone for a slow loading phase and when you go for a maintenance infusion phase, what would be the concentration for this one? Okay, you have a 900 milligram in 500 ml of D5 water, which is the same as the slow loading phase. But this time you will go slower because the doctor, you would expect the doctor to order it 0 0.5 milligram per minute, which is 16.6 .6 rate. Okay ceases per hour so you will be giving how many milligrams how many milligrams 520 milligrams over 18 hours so you'll be giving 520 milligrams over 18 hours so what are the complications of amiodarone side effects as usual low blood pressure but you have to watch for a cardiogenic shock because this is very real so be careful when the patient is uh, having some blood uh, some um, low blood pressure you have to think about cardiogenic shock okay other side effect is bradycardia 
hepatotoxicity, okay? cardiac arrest, asystole, and PEA. So these are serious side effects. Gastrointestinal effects like nausea, vomiting, and anorexia. Pulmonary toxicities which is interstitial pneumonitis. Pulmonary fibrosis and lipoid pneumonia. There's so many bunch of side effects here. So, uh, what else? CNS effects like headache, malaise, dizziness, tremor, peripheral neuropathy, pyristhesia, decreased coordination, new or worsened heart failure, exacerbation of initial arrhythmia, ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation, AV block, QT interval prolongation, fever, thrombocytopenia, aplastic anemia, panso, uh, pancytopenia, hemolytic anemia, coagulation abnormalities, thyroid abnormality like goiter, hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, skin discoloration like photosensitivity, ophthalmologic, uh, ophthalmolog um, ophthalmologic toxicity like corneal de de um, deposits, hyponatremia, hyperglycemia. So uh, what are you going to look for if there is, if there is an overdose is if there's an overdosage of amiodarone what are the symptoms most probable would be what hypotension bradycardia cardiogenic shock hepatotoxicity since it metabolizes in the liver AV block okay nausea vomiting okay so what are what will be the symptomatic support symptomatic support with ECG and blood pressure monitoring so your patients that are uh, who has amiodarone they need to be continuously being monitored okay for bradycardia administer IV beta adrenergic ag agonists or use of a uh, or, or use of a transvenous face pacemaker okay for hypotension administer IV fluids decrease or discontinue medication place patient in Trendelenburg position Inotropic agents or basopressors should be given for hypotension associated with inadequate tissue perfusion. So, um, drug interactions, okay. We have to note that amiodarone may inhibit P450 metabolism, okay. So, what are the drug interactions for amiodarone, okay. Amprenavir and indinavir may increase amiodarone concentration remember these medications your vir vir like your uh, uh, what do you call this uh, antiviral drug beta blockers increases beta blocker levels concomitant use with amiodarone may increase risk of hypotension and bradycardia since beta blockers are already what uh, are already uh, better blockers I mean they they usually uh, decrease the heart rate they usually decrease the blood pressure and you have you're giving another amiodarone there so you have to watch for it calcium channel blockers increase risk of AB block and hypotension can supplement myocardial depressant effects with respect to heart rate conduction and overall contractility so you have to watch if you have some calcium channel blockers in your hand cholecystyramine may increase amiodarone levels you have to watch for this cimetidine may increase amiodarone levels cisapride is contraindicated with amiodarone Cyclosporine increases levels of cyclosporines. You have to check serum creatinine, which may increase. Dig, it increases levels of dig, so you have to be beware of dig toxicity. What else? Disopyramide prolong, prolongs QT interval, increased risk of arrhythmias. What else? Uh, drug interaction, fentanyl, increased risk of cardiac complications. So don't give, uh, just watch if you're giving fentanyl for a patient who are on an amiodarone trip. Okay? Patient has pain, doctor ordered fentanyl. So you have to ask, you have to question that. Flicanide, it increases levels of flicanide. Consider decreasing the dose of flicanide or the tombocor for antiarrhythmic. Levofloxacin. An antibiotic, you have to increase, uh, this one, it increases QT prolongation. Nelfinavir is contraindicated, so don't give nelfinavir. Penitoin may decrease amiodarone levels. Prokinamide increases levels of prokinamide. Napa levels may also be increased. Protease inhibitors may increase amiodarone levels. Quinidine increases levels of quinidine. Ripampine decreases amiodarone levels. Statins, 3A4 substrates, simbastatins or lorastatins may increase risk of myopathy or rhabdomyolysis. 
and warfarin. Finally, this one increases PT. It increases risk of serious bleeding. Consider reducing warfarin dose by at least 50%. So you, there you are. So you have so many things to consider when you are giving amiodarone. There's so many, many drug interactions for amiodarone and you need something You, you need a literature, you need a very good literature in giving amiodarone and when you see that your patient is already on amiodarone drip. So uh, what, uh, what tubing do we use for amiodarone? It should be what? Inline 0.22 micron filter. This is recommended for infusion. So you have an amiodarone drip, get a micron, get a 0.22 micron filter. Infusions exceeding two hours must be administered in glass or non-PBC bags. So, uh, probably you would see uh, you would see a bag of amiodarone that is 100 cc to run for for over 10 minutes. That is okay. But if you're running an amiodarone over six hours for a 900 milligram in 500 ml of D5 water, you would expect an amiodarone that is in the bottle. What else? PBC tubing is acceptable to use. Okay, except for non-PBC uh, bags. Okay, except for bags that are non-PBCs. Try to administer through a central venous access line. Amiodarone also is bad for the pr uh, pregnant women. It crosses the placenta. And if you're a breastfeeding mom, amiodarone is also bad because this is present in breast milk. And as what I said, it is non-dialyzable. So amiodarone is not cleared via dialysis so you still have those amiodarone level and remember half-life of amiodarone average of 26 days and it ranged from 9 days to 47 days so that is so unusual for medication so if IV amiodarone is effective consider switching to an oral regimen okay so if you could see uh, uh, that is also in uh, consideration because of the uh, half-life of amiodarone it has a long half-life and if you're giving IV amiodarone what you should be uh, you should be alerted if you're giving some medications that are not compatible with amiodarone for example aminopelin this may cause precipitate ow okay cefasoline cepamandol heparin mesloceline quinidine sodium bicarbonate so don't use this okay don't use the line for IV amiodarone but amiodarone is compatible to some of the medications like bertilium clindamycin dobutamine dopamine lidocaine metronidazole midazolam morphine nitroglycerin or epinephrine penelephrine potassium and vancomycin so when uh, giving amiodarone, always look for micromedics that, that is uh, most commonly used in the hospital. So you always look for micromedics and review the, com uh, the compatibility and the incompatibility of amiodarone. Patient monitoring, we have to uh, monitor pulmonary function baseline chest x-ray, electrocardiogram, CBC, serum electrolytes, serum creatinine if it's increasing, thyroid function test, liver enzymes, especially uh, uh, amiodarone, meta metabolizes in the liver, eye examination, interacting drug plasma concentrations, clinical evaluations every three months need to monitor what? LFTs and TFTs.